Hello! Happy Tuesday. We're going to do the clue review for the blind tasting clues for last Thursday's mystery grape. It was Cabernet Sauvignon from the Margaret River of Western Australia. So very, very iconic wine. Um, even though not a lot of wine is made from this area, a lot of really good quality wine comes from the Margaret River, which is why it tends to, you know, be a benchmark for Cabernet. So definitely well worth trying. So let's look at the clues here that we gave from last Thursday's game. Clue number one, blackberry. Clue number two, black and red currants, as well as blueberry. So one of the things I always encourage you guys with these mystery grape games is think about the range of fruit that pops up with that. And also kind of the dominance of some types of fruit because it is a really, really good clue about the climate that it comes from. Tells you also a little bit about the nature of the grape as well. So here we have mostly black fruit dominant, blackberries, black currants, little blue fruit with the blueberries and a little red fruit. This is very classic of Cabernet with a Cabernet from a warm climate that has some cooling influences. Cabernet by its nature, it's a late ripening, thick skin grape. So therefore, in order to get it fully ripe, get those tannins ripe in those, in those skins, because it's a high tannin grape, you need to give it time. You need to give it long hang time, and you also need to make sure that you have adequate light penetration hitting the grapes to ripen all those phenolics in the skins. And it also helps lessen the green pyrazine, pyrazine notes as well. So high quality Cabernet producers, they invest a lot of time in the vineyard, canopy management, leaf pooling, shoot positioning, cluster positioning, in order to get that long hang time that they need to get everything fully ripe. And that's gonna bring itself out of the red fruit, more out of the blue fruit into that dark fruit category. Good quality cab tends to be led by dark fruit. Now, cooling influences can help us maintain some of those red fruits and some of those blue fruit notes. In the case of Margaret River, we have a peninsula that is surrounded by oceans, three sides, um, including a little bit of the cooler Southern Ocean on there that is bringing the coolness there, helps it maintain that freshness, and that can pre preserve some of those red fruits and blue fruit notes on there. You think of other varieties, think of like Malbec from Argentina. You know, with that Argentina, you know, low latitude, warm climate there, but with the high altitude and also some of the wind there that can help it preserve the blue fruit notes that you can also get in Malbec. Uh, continuing with our clues, clue number three, bay leaf on this. Now I know this kind of, kind of threw a few folks there when they think, you know, bay leaf, what is going on with this? You know, go, go, go to your kitchen cupboard and get some bay leaf there. It's, everybody should have some bay leaf there. It's one of those things that we, we toss into our stews and, and, you know, sauces. And I don't think anybody really knows what bay leaf brings <laughs> to those things, but it's, it's, we know it's magic. <laughs> it just adds a flavor. So you, you have to bless your pot with the bay leaf. Make, smell it. Think about some of the notes there. Cab does show green notes. It's another thing, part of the nature of the grape. We know about pyrazines, you know, the green bell peppers, the jalapenos. You know, if it's not getting fully ripe, it certainly could pop up those notes. Australia has a nice little twist to it, and there's a lot of eucalyptus, a lot of minty notes that pop out. And they've found studies that the, all, all the different eucalyptus trees in, in the proximity help bring those notes into the wine. Um, it's actually the oils being expressed and transferred onto the grapes. And you can certainly pick that up in Margaret River Cab. I myself tend to find it a little bit more in Kunawara, which is another classic benchmark Australian cab that everybody should be familiar with. I think Kunawara also lends itself a little bit more towards that uh, more vivid kind of green menthol eucalyptus notes because where it's located in South Australia along the limestone coast, its ocean influence is all the cool Southern Ocean. Southern Ocean coming up from Antarctica, that is a very cool ocean. Margaret River has competing warming influences from the Indian Ocean. You know, we say it's surrounded by three sides by ocean. Two of those three sides are the warm Indian Ocean. The Lewin Current helps bring some of that coolness from the Southern Ocean coming up. And so that helps balance and maintain that freshness. But overall, Margaret River is warmer than Kunawara. You think of where its latitude is, uh, 34 degrees south latitude. If we were to flip that over to the northern hemisphere, 
we're going through North Africa, we're going through Iran, Afghanistan, Lebanon. Um, in the U.S., uh, 34th parallel north goes through Los Angeles and uh, Columbia, South Carolina and Athens, Georgia. So you think about that warmth there, you know, lower latitude, closer to the equator, warmth on there. So Margaret River has more warming influences. So it, it, well, it could still show green notes, but I find it tends to be a little bit more that herbal and again, a little bit more bay leaf note to it. Like I said, you'll certainly find some eucalyptus, use eucalyptus trees everywhere in Australia. So those notes can come, but it's interesting with this note here. So I encourage you to just go into kitchen cu cupboard, take a sniff, uh, re-familiarize yourself with bay leaf. Continuing on with our blind tasting clues, vanilla bean, so fresh vanilla bean. We're not talking about the McCormick vanilla extract spice, we're talking about the real deal. Higher quality cabs, use higher quality oak, more portion of new oak, that gets you more of that fresh vanilla bean versus vanilla extract. Clue number five, star anise. So more of a fresh baking spice. Another clue of oak. Number six, cedarwood. This is another classic cab note there. Um, kind of a woodsy, earthy note, but still pretty fresh on that note. And I think these notes, again, kind of encapsulate the warmth. It's a warm Mediterranean climate there in Margaret River with, that, with a late ripening, thick skin grape that these high quality producers are doing the work in the vineyard to get fully ripe. But there's also those cooling influences that we talked about, coastal breezes and some of that cool Southern Ocean current. Let's get to the structure clues. And this is really what's gonna be leading you towards Cabernet screaming, I'm a cab. The color, deep color. Deep ruby can even have a little deep purple note to it. It's usually more in the ruby, but it can go to purple. Um, those blue hues usually come when your pH gets a little higher and that introduces the blue notes to it. But cab, thick skin grape, gives off a lot of color. Pronounced intensity. There's a lot going on in a, class, in a glass of Cabernet. You've got a lot of different fruit clusters. You've got a lot of different floor, you floral notes, herbal notes, spice notes, um, oak notes to it. And they tend to be very vivid. It's that intensity of clarity that jumps out. Dry. Medium plus acidity can certainly be high with that hat. Cab lends itself towards high acidity. Warm climate will te temper that just a little bit, but still acidity will be noticeable. That freshness that brings will be noticeable. High ripe tannins. So you're giving it the hang time, you're giving it the work there. It's still gonna be a high tannic grape, but with good quality premium, like you see in Margaret River, ripe tannins. Medium plus to full body big, that structure, medium to high alcohol. Um, a lot of the, these days, 14% plus is definitely more what you see. So you could be firmly in that high alcohol, but you can certainly have some the 13.8, those things that would be classified as medium. So medium to high. For the context clues, quality levels for a Margaret River Cabernet is going to be in that good to outstanding range on it. Like I said before in the beginning here, not a lot is made but what is, does come out from this area and certainly what is exported out that you see in your markets is gonna be some really good quality stuff. And then price points is gonna be, you know, mid, mid price at the low end for those kind of value wines, but it can go way up to super premium. I mean, there's some definitely some iconic, you know, high cabs there that come from that. And so those are the clues for Margaret River Cabernet Sauvignon. So thank you for watching with that. Hope that gave you some good context for what you're looking for in the glass and connecting that to some of the theory. And with that, I will get on with today's mystery grape game. Have a good one.